Hi everyone. So today I'm going to teach you how to create a stock GPT. Now, what does this stock GPT do? Well, very simply, if you can see on the screen, it goes ahead and fetches real-time stock market data and then uses that data to create a chart and also help me run analysis on that. Now, very simply, it is going to ask it to continue to fetch the data and it's going to create a candlestick chart using that. And with that, we can also ask it to do an analysis of the same. Now, again. It's a great use case for people who want to trade. I'm not a trader by any means because I, mean, I I'm just not apt for that. But probably for people, I wanted to try it out as a use case. So it can charge it to handle complex chart creation automatically. And also can it help a lot of people because I think a lot of people do trading and this can help them to get started or to learn more concepts or analyze data. Right? So let's go ahead and do it. Now, very simply, it's analyzing. It has fetched the data. It is going to run a couple of scripts and by the time it does that well amazing just came and you can see it has created the candlestick data for the last trading date of apple by the hour so for every one hour it has created a candlestick right and then i need to show also what each candlestick represents and how to utilize that right again we can go ahead and ask it to analyze based on the above plot and annotation or 14th January on how the price might look like, right? And again, it may work, may not on this one, can do it. Now again, this, let's see what it does, but until then, let me explain you how this GPT is going to work. Well, it has three things that it needs to do. First, it needs to get real-time data about stocks, right? Second, it needs to create graphs and analyze and create the graphs. So these are candlestick charts and everything else. And then finally, analyze this data, like the action and I've asked it to do right now. Now to get real-time data about stocks, we need to do a couple of things. We need to first create an API that connects with this GPT and gets the real-time data. So if you see $185 roughly is the current price of Apple and it has fetched that from an online service. So I'm going to help you to understand how to set that up and show you how you can set that up for yourself. Okay, let's come back to this. Now, if you see based on the current movement data, it has also done a prediction on like, you know, what the price pricing would look like. And we can ask it to work on a hypothetical scenario, right? Again, it's based on like, you know, a lot of, I mean, this is wallet entity closing trend and others, and it will keep running the analysis. We we'll let it do, we'll just check it out for once what it comes up with. So it will run an extreme analysis again. And I'm pretty sure I can, I'm not someone who will write all these fits. So if you're someone, it may actually be able to it. Okay. speculative annotation for January 14th instead of 185, it's saying it will reach out for $186. Please don't take that as trading advice, but I guess it's a good analysis. And if you're a professional trader, you can obviously ask it to do multiple better analysis than what I just asked. Okay, awesome. So let's start first by setting up a GPT. On the start a GPT, you have to go to explore GPTs and you get this page. Click on create a GPT and you get to this GPT editor. Now again, this is Probably the easiest way to create a GPT is either to go to create where you can use chat GPT itself to create data. But what I like to do is use configure tab and create the GPT. So we're going to name it first and we're going to just write a stock GPT for YouTube because I have a couple of stock GPT and I don't want to get confused. Uh, GPT need to analyze, analyze real time stock data, right? And then finally, we're going to write instructions into it. And then I'm going to select the capabilities. I don't need to do web browsing. I don't need to do DALI image generation. I just need to use code interpreter to create the charts. Now, again, we'll be writing the instructions. I already have a prompt ready for you so that I will explain you how that prompt works. And you can just copy and paste that prompt also and make your own modifications onto that. So let's come to the prompt part. Now, very simply, I start every prompt of mine by giving it a persona and the persona here is a trading analyst so if you look at this again i would tell you very simply it has a comprehensive knowledge of trading concepts it's a responsibility to support traders by here the candlestick charts and applying relevant annotations right finally i also accepted to select a conversation clue this is just how i want it to talk to a user so that you know again chat can go very variant it can do multiple things so i always try to give it a vertical conversation clue so here it is analyzing all the user commands, bringing them into actionable steps, using the following features to effectively fulfill the user demands, split the tasks and 
process extensive data in multiple parts. Again, very simply, I have tried to test with this prompt. That's why it has a couple of things that you will see that have already been taken care of. So you can simply use this prompt and also make your own modifications. So you see this user could like continue to proceed because I was facing an issue that every time I was running this, there will be a lot of data that is just coming together. And because the data format is huge, it was not able to process and create the right chart. Now, very simply, we have given it two features. And I always like to think of features as software features and try, try to create GPTs using the same format. So if you go to this, it has a data collection API. Now, I'm going to explain how this API works and how we're going to configure that. But just to give you an idea, it has an API key, right? I'll show you how to generate the API key. It has a data format of JSON, the time intervals where we can fetch the data. So for a minute, three minutes, 30 minutes, whatever the trading data is. Financial instruments on the US and Indian stock exchange. Again, we are technically going to just use the US stock data because the Indian stock exchange data costs $30 a month and I don't want to spend that for the studio day. Sorry, guys, if you subscribe, wow, surely we would love to show you that day. Date rate, start date and end date. And finally, a custom GPT action, which is the get time series data. Again, this will be explained better once we start setting up the API. But this is just, I'm telling you that you have an access to an API. Use that API to collect data. That is our first feature. Second, creating charts and annotations. Now, again, if you see, utilize the code interpreter for generating candlestick charts and annotations. And finally, you have strict conditions. Now, if you look at the strict conditions, very simply, I have put that because I have learned about having these strict conditions based on my testing. Like, you know, it will always go ahead and use NPL finance library. I don't want it to use it because it really causes a lot of issues. So this works and to create charts. Now, again, also I've given it a chart generation process. I will not go into detail. It simply just tells it, fetch the data, verify the data is correct, load the data in the board interpreter and finally create a chart and show the chart to the user. You may think like this is too much actually why I haven't created this because when I was testing this out very specifically you would have an issue that it will go ahead and do whatever it wants and whenever it does whatever it wants it creates a lot of problems. So I just wrote it down and said you are going to use this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy and paste this. This prompt will be available for you guys in the description. So go ahead and copy and paste it if you want to. Okay. And I'm just going to copy and paste this and we are going to CPD and just paste this prompt. And that's it. That's our first step already done. We are halfway there, guys. Now, we have to create a something called an action. Now, action in the simplest format is just a way to tell ChatGPT that you have an action available to use an API and connect to the real world out there. To get the data, to do some work, to maybe perform some action and just do that. So here, we have to create something specifically called an OpenAI schema format. So... We actually have a great way to do this, but I'm going to show you the easiest format. Okay, so you actually have actually an actions GPT also created, but I have a better one. Okay, let's come to this. So first we need to filter. So we are going to just create an action. Now to create an action, we'll start with one step number one. We need to figure out a service which can allow us to get data about the stock markets at an extremely low cost. Well, I ended up at 12data.com. This is a great service, guys. It has probably one of the very developer-friendly, what we did wire actually, and you can get real-time data literally about any other market for, for free because their free plan is pretty great, right? So again, we we'll just we are just going to use this, and I want to show you how to use this API. So first, go ahead and sign up. I've already signed up. I have an API key to generate an API key. Click on API keys and you can just click and generate a new one. I already have one. I don't want to generate a new one. And I'm not going to show that. Please never show your API keys to anyone. And just use that. Once we come there, you have to go to something called an API playground. Right? Under the market data, we can go ahead to an API playground. Now, very simply, API playground here is a very simple thing which helps you create an API request using just a UI. So I want to get time series for Apple. One hour intervals, country US, stock exchange is New York Stock Exchange, the type of the stock, output size, and everything. And we can use, click on test request, and it will go ahead and show what the Apple looks like. Again, not found, it's probably wrong because Apple, or you can just use end process. Okay, so we'll see why that was the issue, but I mean, I think Apple, let's see, Apple. Yeah, it's a, 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 right. 
That's what a Greek clone. Let's see. Just give it a second. Ah, no details only for the specified dates yet because I'm looking at a Sunday. So let's look at from 11th Jan to 12th Jan. And we can test the request. And you have all the data. This is the same way the data will be fetched in our ChatGPT also. But to generate this response, what we'll do is we'll just copy this request, right? Once you copy this request, go to something called GPT Customizer File Find and JSON Action Create. This is an amazing GPT. I think it can have a better name. Created by this amazing guy, webcafesoftware.com. I have forgotten their name, but they have an amazing GPT. So I just wanted to create a GPT action using the URL. Now, if we go ahead, it will go ahead and take this URL and generate, uh, create a JSON structure, which I can simply copy and paste. It's as easy as that to create an API format to this. It's really the probably one of the things that I love about GPTs that you can use other GPTs to create a better GPT for yourself. Once it completes the writing, we literally just need to click on copy and paste and we will be good to go. I think so. One thing if you see this responses format is too big. Okay, so I don't want to use such a big one. I'll just ask it to simplify the responses structure because Again, you can use the same one. I just like to have my JSONs a bit simpler because again, when you are debugging them, you may get some issues. So again, not to go too technical, we are trying to keep it as simple as possible. We'll just ask it to do that and let's see. Let it write this all and then we can just simply copy and paste this. And then again, this looks fine. Let's see how it works. We'll just copy this code and go and paste this in chat. Now, again, this is great, right? I think they can like an art time series level things missing. Yes. In quad text. All right, there is an error. Object schema on the same properties. Okay, well, we are just going to do one thing. We're just going to copy paste this, getting the following error. It's always good to like, you know, always do error like again it's simply like you know sometimes you'll get this and sometimes you won't even get these errors but it's great like even during a video i'm not going to cut this out because very simply if there is an error you know how to figure it out and how to solve it so let's see how this data structure looks like finally i think the response structure is not proper because because i think it's really causing issues okay so i actually have a custom gpt ready with that i can also use that one but okay let's come back to this Paste this. Yeah. Okay. So on. Okay. Great. Right. Best as always is to, you know, go ahead and use this. Now, once we have all this data, we have the get time series data. We can test this out also. It will not work because it does not have an API key. I need a now. It will not have an API. Holy shit. Has found an API key. Let's see. So again, I don't think it's going to run because it's very simply does not have an API key and I'm going to show you how to run that. But okay, so you have an authentication where you can add an API key, right? But it is really a problem to add this and I've had multiple issues with this, but let me just show you this to you. Okay, so I'm just going to, just going to hide this for a second. And, oh well. Yeah, so I've copied pasted the API key that I have and I'm going to give it as an input here. So once it has that, it should work, but I haven't had the great ways on working with it, okay? So let's see, we have our GPT, we have a data, we have given it a action and it should be able to use it. Now that we have updated the API key, I just wanted to anonymize the stock trading data one last trading day. Apple and I leave intervals and create a chart. Let's see what it does. I it should work. You know, I have entered everything correctly and it should be workable to go from there. So it will definitely go ahead and talk to it. Perfect. We'll just make it more neat for somebody. Go ahead and see. 
Because again, we just want to speed up the process. I don't want to be like, you know, let it go on and on and on. That's one problem with chat GPT. Like it will always keep going on and on and you can never figure out when it's going to stop. And that sometimes sucks a bit. That's pretty much it. But that's it. I'm going to speed this part up a bit. Probably not. And but like, you know, I mean, one thing that be careful about hard coding your API is key. Because once we hard code it and if you're sharing this with everyone, people can abuse it. People can fetch out your API key because even if you put some protection, uh, I think it, it's still going to be challenging a bit more. So again, we'll just we are just going to do try a couple of things out and see how to do. It. But but again, just be careful while you are entering all this data. Uh, yeah, if you see, there's a error, right? And then I've literally told it not to use this MPL finance library. And once you see that, one understand like you know, ChatGPT is still good, but it's not great that at following instructions, it does not follow the right kind of instructions. Like we have literally written it in the prompt instructions that don't use the NPL finance library, use map.lib, but we go ahead and make the same error. And that causes a problem when you are giving this GPT to other people, right? And just look at this. Yeah. You just use map.lib. Now, when you are giving these to a user and they don't know what any of that means, that just sucks. And I'm pretty sure there will be something that we can do in the prompt. I have done something called a strip compliance notice kind of a thing. I'll uh, where you can simply add that at the top and sit between two tags, XML tags with, and just show you when this runs. So if you can see what I'll do is, I'll just add it like this with compliance notice, and you can add that. And just put between this whatever you want it to follow strictly. And that's something that I use. It's something that you can also use and go ahead with that. Okay, and again, here's the candlestick chart. Works, go ahead, try it out, have fun with it. And I need to be create a lot of more stuff with this now that you have a lot of skills at your hand. Until then, I'll see you in the next one and bye bye.